Hey friend, it's me Vasco with a quick announcement. We at the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast are organizing this year's Scrum Master Summit. For tickets and details on the summit, check out the URL bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. All one word S-M-S-U-M-M-I-T 22. And now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this very special Tuesday episode in this whole week with Jürgen Apelo. Hi, Jürgen. Welcome back. Hey, Vasco. So today we're going to talk about productivity in teams and organizations. Uh, yesterday, we talked about full-time versus flexible team membership. If you want to listen to that episode, just follow the link on the show notes and uh, listen to that, as I think it will introduce also some of the topics we are going to talk about today. So, Jürgen, while preparing for this episode, you shared why productivity may be the wrong paradigm in modern product organizations. Why is that and what is the alternative that you're talking about in the unfix? Let me let me begin with an example of a long time ago when I was a software engineer and we're we're talking 20 years ago or or something when I was working uh, for a co- big consultancy company, you know the kind, they rent out your brain to the highest bidder, basically. And they did that with a couple of other software engineers. So I ended up on a, uh, on a team of four people. I had three uh, teammates at the time. And I remember I loved my team. I, I really went to, to the clients uh, of, because that's why we worked uh, with my team and we had fun and we were trying to be productive and try to do a good job. But I cared nothing whatsoever about the consultancy company that I was, that, I, that, that was paying me actually zero zip. And I quit my job within one year and went somewhere else. And I remember, by the way, that that was one of the worst experiences of my life was when we had Christmas dinner, you know, um, also in the Netherlands, companies organized these events with the whole company. Well, this company was so large that we had 3000 people in one huge event hall with some really cheesy entertainment going on on stage while everyone was having exactly the same dinner at the same time, which was, of course, very low quality. (laughs) And I was sitting at a table with people from my department that I had never seen because I was rented out (laughs) to a client and I there was these people were I, I didn't even know them. So it was like, so what are you doing and what are you doing? I felt terrible. I thought, is, is this the company that I work for? They did basically nothing to make me feel that I belonged to a place that cared about me. And this is an example of what I find very important now. And I think actually only the Spotify model has done that well. They painted a tribe, a picture of a box where everyone should feel that they belong to where people care about you as a human being. And no matter what team you move to, you should feel that 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 sense of belonging. And I, I had nothing of that at that consultancy company. So yeah, I could be very productive for less than a year, but I quit my job. And how useful is that for a company? If people are if the most productive ones feel that they don't really belong and they go somewhere else. So I think community trumps productivity. The first thing to to take care of as managers is that people feel that they belong, that there is a that there is a community there of people who are dry, trying to do a good job, who are trying to be productive, but it should be more than just the three people on your team that 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 you care about. And that is the the starting point. Someone asked me yesterday, what is the fundamental thing in the unfixed model or I think that's that's the that's the, the the primary concept and I would say that's the base I intentionally call it the base like this is your home this is this is where you return to and every team that you are on that could be a crew like an airline crew or the crew on a ship or whatever I, I like that metaphor because it says that this is a journey a temporary engagement that you are involved in with this team but you come back to your base that's where you that's where you belong so in uh, the spotify metal uh sorry the spotify model not metal <laughs> they really indeed talk about the the tribe as being kind of the 
home base for certain specialties so that people can go back and, and feel belonging to. Yesterday, we also talked about that aspect of managers' job being that of taking care of the employee and, and making them feel like they belong. And uh, when I read the topic, uh, this productivity versus community, of course, the, the the very basic analogy to the industrial world came to mind, right? Like, because everything was about productivity in the Taylor world or the Tayloristic view of the world. And when I think about this community aspect, I'm starting to think about other things that are kind of popping up, like, you know, like a network of mushrooms in the agile community. Or we talk about dynamic reteaming. So, of course, having a base, like you call it in Unfix, is uh, an enabler for that dynamic reteaming because you always belong somewhere. You don't feel like you're being, you know, just pulled around like a chess piece. We also talk about psychological safety. And of course, we also talk about commitment to the team, kind of collaboration and, and helping each other uh, within a team and so on. Is this kind of a, a, a synthesis that you, that you came up with to all of these trends or are these different things? Yeah, no, definitely. And you can see, um, I mean, uh, my first book was Management 3 at all, where I described that this is one of the most important things to take care of as a manager. Uh, the the uh, self-organization can only exist with constraints, is what I learned from complexity science. Well, guess who is responsible for the constraints? That's a manager's job, to, to put the right constraints on self-organization so that you can have a thousand flowers bloom in your garden, uh, uh, metaphorically. And you see that missing in certain agile scaling frameworks where they sort of intentionally ignored managers like, OK, well, we have managers somewhere, but let's just talk about not talk about that. We talk about the product. That is the scope of safe. That's the scope of, of less and, and several others. And I think that's a missed opportunity. Actually, I think that's maybe step two. Step one would be, okay, but where do all these people belong? Where do they feel that, what, what is their home? And I, my thinking has changed, maybe shifted a little bit. Um, I remember a story that I often told in my management theory classes of, of a guy named Peter who was working on one team and we needed his talent for with a certain technology on another team. So we and the team leaders asked uh, him to uh, to move to the other team and he said no he didn't want to because he, he had friends on the team that he he was working on and that was a bit of an issue because he wasn't the only one with with that with that knowledge well the compromise was that he was sort of he became sort of a pairing partner and an internal consultant to the other team so that the problem was solved but we respected him as a human being we did not just move him around as if he was a part in a machine i think that was good but now i think the the real problem there was that peop, that peter apparently felt his primary sense of belonging at the team level and not at the base level he would have cared less if he if he felt that the entire base were his friends and that it was okay to for a while to work on another team because he would work with other people that uh, that he liked and this is also what indeed Heidi Halfen suggests in her book dynamic reteaming and Chris Smith wrote about it about uh, Redgate software where they do reteaming once per year uh, Joe Justice, you know Joe uh, Vashko, he uh, he describes in his some of his webcasts and webinars that they do reteaming every couple of hours at at Tesla. That's insane, <laughs> but Tesla is an insane company, of course. So they they drive this up this idea to the max. So every three hours you work with other people, and then within a couple of weeks you've worked with everyone in the base. So you know everyone. You know the learning goes through the roof, of course. Uh, in in a community like that, so my ch my my ch uh, thinking has changed a little bit, less focus on the team and more focus on on the tribe, on the base, because indeed that makes it easier to do reteaming when it makes sense, when it would be good for the for the experience of the employees, or when it would be good for the agility of the of the company. So, of course, the question that comes to mind is, how, how is then a base different from a functional department? Well, uh, it is different in the sense that you should have every uh, role represented there. There's no difference there uh, with what, what Scrum and, and Kanban and every other method and framework uh, says. You should have all 
roles, jobs, functions represented to offer value to customers. So it is cross-functional. The base is cross-functional. You have, have marketing and, and, and development and, and uh, backend support and, and uh, et cetera represented in the base. And then you define the scope of the base is, okay, what chunk of value do we carve out with this unit because uh, there could be other bases in the company and they should each have their own customer oriented domain but we know how to do these kinds of things to align units with with value streams safe offer something uh, s similar advice um so there's no difference there what i add is the idea what is people's home and that's the community angle that I actually only saw in the Spotify model. And I don't see it in the other models because there's so much focus on what are the features that we're going to build to offer value to customers, which is which important, of course. But then why would people care about that, right? Why would someone care about the value of a customer if nobody is there to care for them as, as human beings? Absolutely. And, and this reminds me that uh, uh, we're editing here a book in Oikosophy called Shift from Product to People. And you've referred to that already uh, a few times that in, in the Agile community and, and you in the Unfix model talk about this shift that it's not about product only. It's you call it uh, the whole human experience, right? The employee and, and the customer experience. And it really is about designing the way we work and the products around the people that are supposed to benefit from them. And that's both employees and customers. Exactly. And uh, you can see when you Google a bit, you will find that customer experience even has its own acronym, CX, and employee experience likewise is called EX. So these are big trends, actually, in, in the world, the, the human experience. And I, I completely agree with, with Richard Branson, who said uh, managers should take care of the employees and then they can take care of the customer. And then, then you covered both, right? And the Unfix model is basically the implementation of, of that. Absolutely. So Unfix model at unfix.work. The link will be on the show notes. And of course, we have this whole week of episodes to, to talk about it. So stay tuned. Tomorrow, we will come back to the topic. Thank you very much, Jürgen. Thank you, Vasco. Hey friends, it's Vasco again, now with a bit longer announcement. I'm part of the team that is behind the Global Scrum Master Summit, the conference dedicated to the Scrum Master role. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is the place to learn, to share, and of course, to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from the whole globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. We have several amazing key notes and seven tracks that feature people like you and of course thought leaders sharing their insights their knowledge and helping you become an awesome scrum master you can check out all of the details of the summit including the keynotes announced the track chairs and much more at bit.ly forward slash sm summit 22 that's all one word that's bit.ly forward slash sm s u m m i t and the numeral two two i'll see you on the conference floor